The first time clear as day uh, that I heard rap music and fell in love with it was when I was probably about 12 and there were a bunch of kids that lived in the same street as me and we would all hang out together. I'm sure a lot of kids know what I'm talking about. You have like a big street gang. It's kids that live in your street. You all hang out. And uh, it was a boy's house, two brothers named Noah and Karim. And he, Karim was probably about 17, Noah was younger, like 13, 14. And um, I remember his playlists being on the computers and we would listen to them and they played Tupac, Baby Don't Cry. And I was like, what is this? And that was the song that made me fall in love with the rap. Do you remember what, uh, when you decided that you personally wanted to rap and do you remember what your first rhyme was about? I don't remember um, I don't remember the moment that I decided I wanted to be a rapper. I think it was just something that slowly evolved, but I do remember listening to rap songs and listening to other people sing rap songs, friends, and thinking, you have the lyrics wrong. And taking such pride in knowing the lyrics to rap songs and making sure that I had them right was something I was really concerned about. And I would look online as you do as a kid and Google song lyrics. And I would think to myself, even I know that these are wrong. And I just became obsessed with wanting to know what the correct lyrics were, wanting to know what the words meant and just dissecting lyrics, rap lyrics and being really interested in that. And I don't remember, I couldn't tell you how that progressed from me having this obsession with lyrics and writing my own. Somewhere along there it just translated and it happened. But I remember me writing a song to a guy that I liked and I thought this will impress him. He will know that I'm so deep with these lyrics. And that was my first attempt at ever writing a rhyme was for a boy, which I think when you're a girl, most of the things you do are for boys. <laughs> so, yeah. But you don't remember what those lines were? No, I just remember, well, I remember it was really corny and I remember the gist of it was me saying, like, you're my silver lining <laughs> of my, all the bad things in the world. Like, as long as there is you, I, you are like the silver lining to my horrible life. Because when you're a teenager, everything seems so horrible. Now, I remember reading something about the, the, when you were in Australia, you, were, you actually felt very outcasted mm. and like you were depressed. Um, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? Do you, can, looking back, can you pinpoint why you just didn't relate to the people around you? Or what was it in particular that made you feel kind of isolated? Um... You know what, it was a lot of different things and sometimes I hear people say this uh, and they'll be like, well, why would it be so horrible? Where you're from is so beautiful and it is so beautiful where I'm from. But um, I had a lot of things going on and I felt very alone and, you know, I had a, my parents always had a funny relationship, a bad relationship and when I was in grade five, my father, and I've never actually said this, but it is where it kind of all started, left me a note and gave it to my teacher. And I got to school that morning and she gave me a letter and said, that your father left this for you. And it, and I opened it up and he had left me a note saying that he had, he had left and he left me for a few years. And it basically said in this letter that he would see me and my younger sister mother walk around town and see us be a family and this depressed him and made him so upset that we would never visit him that he wanted to kill himself and he left and I didn't see him for a while and um, I was always very scared of my father for a while until I became older and started to understand him because he is a very like He's a very smart man, but sometimes people that are almost genius are kind of crazy and hard to deal with and very weird socially, and this man is. And now that I'm older, I totally get him and we get along so good. And he's influenced me so much, but I always had this thing with my father where I was scared of him and I didn't want to go to his house when I was a kid. 
uh, by myself because I didn't want him to get mad at me for little things and scream and I so I wouldn't go around and he left this note and he just kind of dipped and it made me feel really sad not to have him and it kind of was the beginning now that I look back at at it in retrospect to me just being uh, isolating myself and being in my own shell and I was already getting teased by kids at school but as well when that happened it just sucked it the life out of me a little bit to have one parent just go and not know when they were really coming back and it always made me feel weird and then I started to like this music and nobody else liked it either and I just didn't really have friends and I had a bit of a weird thing going on there with my relationship with my parent and it was I don't know I just felt like I was kind of stuck in a rut and it my happiness kept deteriorating over time and it seemed to be getting worse and worse and worse to where I would research online am I bipolar mm. and am what is depression and things like this I would look at thinking is there something wrong with me do I need medication because I'm really fucking sad mm -hmm. and I don't know, I see sometimes people say, oh, well, it's so nice where you're from. And I think you can never know what somebody's going through. Oh, it can be paradise and you can still be completely miserable. And I was just miserable for a lot of different reasons, music being one of them. But I just felt like if I could get away to this other place, I had it in my head. Obviously, it's a fantasy land because it's the grass is greener type of a thing. And um, yeah, I thought I could make it as a rapper better in America, but that's ultimately not what made me move. It was just that things seemed so hopeless where I was and I needed something to change and it had to be my surroundings for me to feel happy and I just needed to get away and escape everything and so I did and I thought music was the biggest part of my life. That was It was the only thing that I had that I felt like made me happy and got me kind of through my day and so I wanted to go somewhere where I felt like people could share that interest, music, the biggest interest that I had and that was America to me so I left. Before we talk a little bit about you moving to, to Miami, uh, I, I also remember reading that uh, with your mom the way you made some money was that you two would clean, clean. hotels together yeah. in like a neighboring town. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, I had a lot of jobs actually saving money, not just cleaning uh, with my mother. I worked at a supermarket, I worked in a CD store, but I got fired for stealing an Ashanti single um, <laughs> on uh, when they do like, you know when you do stock returns of what didn't sell and you, then I thought this is a perfect time to steal. Mm. Wrong, it was a terrible time to steal and I definitely got fired. But I had a lot of different jobs like that where I was saving money and um, they were shit jobs and you get paid shit like six dollars an hour and you're not making any money and I thought this sucks and my mother was cleaning houses and sometimes she would let me come and help her out and she actually ended up getting offered a job to be a real estate agent and so she wasn't cleaning anymore but she had a business and um, I kind of knew the ropes a little bit and she said well why don't you do this because I wasn't going to school anymore and so she kind of passed it on to me and I was able to get my own clients and get more clients and build on that and also pick up her old ones and I started to do the business and I wouldn't be getting paid by the hour anymore I'd be getting whatever my rate is for the house so I could say I want it's two hundred dollars to clean this house and I know I can clean it in two hours and that seems like great money when you're a teenager thinking, what? <laughs> I was getting $12 for two hours work in the supermarket and I can clean a house and get $200? Right. This is so good. And if I don't make over $10,000, I don't even have to pay taxes. <laughs> this is amazing. So I was getting a lot of cash underhand and stuff like that. It was really good. But I still would always clean with my mother. And that's like a memory I definitely will have forever of us cleaning together but it's cool like that I think to go to work with your parent and do a job like that it makes you closer and um, I definitely have like the ultimate respect for my mother seeing her do stuff like that and she's helped me a lot you know I remember she was the person that gave me 
the money to go record my first ever song in a studio and it would cost two hundred dollars for five hours and I sat down and I was like please I I want to be a rapper and I remember she said to me well if you want to be a rapper then what do you need to do and I said people need to hear my music and I don't have any recordings to have and she said well look up in the phone book because it wasn't the internet then it wasn't google yet and it had the big yellow page phone book and she said open it up find a recording studio that you can go to and we can figure it out and i remember opening it up going through the phone book that one the cheapest one and she gave me two hundred dollars and she went and did it and it meant something to me because i know how hard she had to work to get the two hundred dollars it's hard labor cleaning is a hard job your back gets fucked up you're hunched down the whole time so i think something about cleaning with your mom or doing a laborious job with your family makes you definitely closer and have a lot of respect for them mm -hmm.